Peace, peace, peace. This is your humble hip-hop sales coach, Tiger Toledo. And you already know what it is, man. You rock it with the best. You heard? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You are now tuning in to the Tiger Toledo Entrepreneurs Podcast. So, if you are an entrepreneur, please share this video with your fellow entrepreneurs. I think they'll find this very helpful in making the best bang for their buck. You heard? So shout out to you guys. Salute to all you guys. Thank you for allowing me to take a small portion of your time in this Friday. So we're going to get right into it, man. Three ways to tell if you're prostituting your services. Three ways to tell if you're prostituting your services. So let's get right into it. I want to ask you guys a question. What's up, Miss Tina? I want to ask you guys a question here, right? <clears throat> Let's just say your goal is to make a million dollars a year, right? Your goal is to make a million dollars a year. You have a product. You have a product for you. I okay. We're experiencing difficulties, ladies and gentlemen. One, two, one. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. And some te technical difficulties. Okay. It looked like we're back online. Okay. What's up? Uh, unapologetically, K. Renee, salute to you. Okay. So we're going to get into it. Three ways to tell if you are prostituting your services, right? So let's use this scenario, for instance. You want to make one million dollars this year from June 29th, 2018 to June 29th, 2019. You have a, that product is $7. How many customers or clients would you have to sell to reach $1 million for that year? Or you have the math, I already did it for you. You literally have to sell that $7 product to 142,857, 142,857 people. Okay. Shout out to Pamela and T. Ron. So now ask yourself this. Now you bumped up your product. Now you have a hundred dollar product. How many customers would you have to sell? If you had, a sorry, ladies and gentlemen, we are experiencing some technical difficulties here. Okay. Yeah. 34,000. Right. So a hundred, a hundred people, right? You have a hundred dollar product. How many customers would you have to sell to reach a million dollars that year. Now you had your numbers went down from 142,000 to now you're only selling 10,000. And as you go up, as you add a zero, you can drop a, another zero. So a thousand dollar product, you only have to sell a thousand clients, $10,000 product, a hundred clients. So what I want you guys to understand is business is about margin. You do not want to be that company where your your output, your volume output is so high, but your profit margin is so small. I know people in the trucking industry, right, that made $1 million plus per year. So when I asked them, what was your take home? They would tell me $80,000. I said, God damn, dude, how do you make a million dollars for that year and your take home is only $80,000. What the hell happened to that? The $920,000 and went to, you know, maintenance of the vehicle because they were running on volume. They were running their business on volume. And that is not a sustainable way of doing business. 
because you're going to have the numbers. You're going to you're going to service a lot of people. Right. And because you're servicing a lot of people, you're going to have a lot more customer service. So you got to hire a staff to service that many people. Uh, your company is not lean anymore. You have a person for this. You have a person for that. You have a person for that. And a lot of money is going out and your profit margins are very small. So what you want to do, you always want to go after a higher profit margin. Now, how do you know if your profit margin sucks? And this is what we're going to talk about. You're going to understand if your profit margin sucks by the, when you tell your price to a customer, right? Let's just say somebody's calling for a service. Hey, uh, Brett, how much are you charging for this? And you tell them a price and they say, oh, that's it. You're charging too much. I mean, you're charging, you're, you're the cheapest in your industry. If they say, oh, that's it. You need to raise your price. If your customer says, okay, how do you want to take, take credit card? Do you take cash? How do you take payment? If they say that right off the back with no resistance, you're charging too less. You are prostituting your services. There has to be some type of resistance. It might not be a lot of resistance, but you need some resistance to gauge if you are the cheapest in your industry. The third way of telling if you're prostituting your service, if they say, if your customer, if you give them a price and your customer says, oh, I thought you were going to be a lot more than that. If they say that, you are definitely the cheapest in your industry. You do not want to be the cheapest in the industry. You would be better off selling a, and, and you, you may not have a $10,000 product, but a higher tier and lower customer base is better than to have a shitload of customers and you're very, uh, have a very, very small profit margin. Like you're only making 20 cents per customer. You're, you're not going to be able to sustain business like that. So I hope this helps out again. I'll go over it with you again. The three ways to tell if you are the cheapest in your industry or you're prostituting your services is by what your customer says. If your customer says, if you give a price out and your customer says, oh, that's it, you're the cheapest in the industry. Raise your price. If your customer says, okay, do you accept cash or credit card? With no resistance, you're the cheapest in the industry. If your customer says, I thought you were going to be a lot more than that. You're the cheapest in your industry. You need to raise your prices. You need to be at a point where it is there is some resistance, not a lot of resistance. If they'd be like, oh, hell no. And then they click. If you get a lot of those, then your prices are way too high. You do not want to have your products and services dictated by your competition. You do not want, you know, if, if somebody says like, oh, your prices are comparable to this. That means your competition is actually dictating your price. Your competition is dictating your price. Salute to, to you, Pearl, uh, Tanisha Edwards, Carlos, Kevin. Thank you for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. So I want you guys to start looking into, it's, it's really an inner belief. It's really an inner belief that what do you think about your product? What do you think about your services? Do you believe you can ask more? Or sometimes you put yourself in such a jam that you have overhead, you have staff, and you're afraid of asking for more because you're afraid that you may lose some customers. Yes, you do want to lose some customers and gain more affluent customers. You prefer to have, who wouldn't prefer to have a hundred customers paying $10,000 a pop versus 142,000 customers paying $7 a pop. And you getting just as many, you're probably getting 10 times more complaints. You're getting, okay. I'll give you an example, man. I have gone to seminars, right? Where I'd spend maybe a thousand, two thousand dollars. And then I've been to seminars where I'd only spend like maybe a hundred, two hundred dollars. 
the clientele that you are, the customer base is totally different. The person that's going to spend one, two, five, ten thousand dollars for a seminar to learn something, they're not worried about, hey, where are the croissants and the breakfast and the coffee and the tea that they're supposed to serve? Those people that are spending five dollars, a hundred dollars, or even going to a free seminar, they are the most needy people you probably will ever meet. Hey, I thought they was going to serve us some breakfast. Hey, I thought there was, this coffee is cold. Man, where's the sugar? There's no ice in this water pitcher. Dude, fuck that, dude. You don't want that type of clientele, man. I'm telling you, it is pure headache. It is pure headache. You want people that really want your product for what, you know, that will revolutionize their business, their you know, their lifestyle and they're willing to play, pay premium dollars for your services. Listen, for a Bugatti, if one of your tires go out on a Bugatti, you have to, you have to spend $36,000 for one tire, $36,000 for one tire to be replaced on a Bugatti. What type of clientele are you think uh, what kind of you know complaints do you think you're getting from a person that's spending that much money for one tire you do not want to be the cheapest in your industry some of you guys are already offering some very very cheap products right now and you know exactly what i'm talking about you're getting emails from this person this person is calling you saying i didn't get my seven dollar ebook why is it taking so long? Dude, you spent $7. Relax. Matter of fact, here, here's your $7 back. Don't ever do business with me anymore. That Those type of headaches, you guys want to stay away from that shit. You want to target people with a little more. Think about it, man. A lot of the high Kmart, Kmart was competing on price. Gone. Sears, Sears was competing on price, gone. Walmart, Walmart is competing on price now. We'll see, we'll see where Walmart ends up. Right now, Amazon is putting foot the ass to Walmart right now. So you competing on a level of cash only, like, like low price tiers. That's not what you want to do with your business. You want to Offer a premium price to get a premium customer base. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Type them in the comments section below. If you guys are finding value in this, definitely share it with your fellow entrepreneurs. I really appreciate it. Um, also, I have the sales and math, sales and marketing boot camp. Definitely join. That is a free, again, listen, it is a free opt-in for my emails. This will help you out, but it's it's definitely not something that I'm going to offer to people that actually are paying. My playing clients get a totally different type of information. Free clients, you get free shit because that's what you're looking for. But the ones that pay, you can't possibly treat your paying clients. You're, okay, if I come to your store, you have a $100 product. And then you have a $10,000 Rolex. Are you going to treat your customer that spent $10,000 on a Rolex the same as you treated that person with $100? If you do, you're making a mistake. You can't treat those two the same. You cannot treat those two the same. The 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 political or, or the political corrective way would be like, treat everybody the same. Everybody, man, fuck that. You don't treat everybody the same. You can't treat everybody the same. Not everybody's the same. Do you treat family different than friends? Do you treat friends different from strangers? Do you treat your kids different from the random kid in the daycare? You can't treat people the same. Get, get that bullshit out of your mind. That is a lie. That is a lie. You're not supposed to treat everybody the same. 
you treat your premium high tier customers differently than those freebie freeloaders that want your free shit. You can't treat them the same. So you're going to treat me, a person that spent $10,000 with you, you're going to treat me the same as you treat this person that got a free ebook and haven't broke no bread with you at all? I'll take my money and go somewhere else. So again, if you guys have any questions, drop it in the comment section below. I hope this helps you guys out. Remember, do not be the cheapest in your industry. I put a screenshot of a customer that tried to, um, that was, you know, me and him, we weren't really going back and forth because I shut him down. But if you got, have a chance, go through my uh, timeline, you'll see that I put a real life scenario of a customer that wanted my services on Yelp. I basically told him this was our, because I already know we're the highest in the industry. The only other companies that are higher than us are law firms and they went to school for eight years for that shit. I don't have a law degree. And this customer sees that he says, Hey, you guys are just a little bit less than a law firm that my law firm that I, I deal with like dude, this is what the price is. And then I told him, if this doesn't work for you, this, this company, this business may not be for you. Thank you for reaching out to us. Have a great day. You have to be willing to walk away from the sale. You have to be able to value your time. Remember, time is the most precious commodity on the planet. You can never get time back. You can make money to the day you die. You can never get this time back. Value your time. Value your time. 